Now, Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Ngagwa's quest to extend his term beyond the constitutional limits in 2028, is likely to face resistance as the military, which is the traditional political power broker in Zimbabwe, is opposed to such moves. While Nangagwa has repeatedly declared that he is a constitutionalist and will not seek an extension beyond 2028, critics remain skeptical of his intentions. As they say publicly, he seems to be in agreement that he will retire in 2028. 2028. However, in political circles, he is speaking a different language and giving different signals that are encouraging his core supporters to push for a constitutional amendment for him to stay on until 2030. In Zimbabwe, the role of the military in intra-party politics is apparent and has shown over the years. Joining me to talk about this now is a political analyst, Malcolm Borero Aruzive. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Aruzive, for joining us on the news. Thank you, thank you. So uh, what does the statement uh, from the Zimbabwean army about blocking President Emerson Nangagwa from allegedly seeking a third term signify about the level of military influence in the country's politics? Well, the statement from the military is rather not so um, uh, formal. Of course, it's coming from sources within the military coded by the media. Um, it's not formal because the army constitutionally should not double in, you know, day-to-day -day domestic politics as it is an avenue for, for civilians. But it's something that we can't brush aside. It's something that we have to also take seriously because the military has doubled in politics from time in time again. We've seen that um, in 2008 elections when the opposition under Dr. Morgan Richard Trangrai, they led one elections, but the military came in and resisted power transfer to the opposition. We've also seen in more historical uh, examples, the power, you know, being transferred by the military during the Mkagao Declaration in 1975, where power, you know, was transferred by the military uh, within some pair of uh, structures to the late President Robert Mugabe. So the military time and time again have doubled in politics, um, and the military from time and time again, they have um, involved themselves in politics. We saw even in 2018, when the opposition won under advocate Nelson Chamisa, the military came out in the streets and uh, shot civilians to resist a power, you know, a transition. So the military, come what may, it has a significant uh, stake. It, it's rather a stockholder in terms of uh, politics in Zimbabwe. And it's something which, if they are to mention that uh, Emerson Nangagwa will not extend his term, is something that must also be taken seriously given uh, the, you know, their history. So it's something which, um, you know, Zimbabweans in the world at large must, um, you know, treat seriously, although they should never condone the military getting involved in, in politics, but it's something that will happen and it's something that Emerson Nangago himself should take seriously considering that he came in through a military coup. The succession also from Robert Mkabe to Emerson Nangagwa was through a military coup. It was the military which took tanks into the streets. It was the gun that um, determined that transition. So it's something that we that cannot be dismissed. It's something that should be taken and considered. Yeah, but it seems you are not in support of the military's involvement uh, in the political um, dispensation in the country. So I'm wondering if that um, is actually echoed by the sentiments of citizens in the country as regards the involvement of the military in the country's political matters? Yes, yeah, citizens do definitely, they do not condone the military getting involved in, in civilian politics because um, uh, the civilian politics, according to the constitution, politics is a civilian affair and the military should not be, you know, uh, should not table in them. And also according to general democratic principles, the military should not decide. It's not the gun that should determine politics. It's the pen. It's the ballot. But the military has proven to be mightier in terms of uh, fettering their way and their will into the day-to-day -day politics of Zimbabwe. The military, no, it's not just in terms of politics. It's also in the economy. We have seen the military, even in, in Diamonds, in Chiazwa, it's the military that uh, eventually 
you know, uh, profited most to the detriment of the Zimbabwean economy. We can see even when it comes to agricultural uh, programs and projects, it's the military through command agriculture currently, and before there were other programs like Maguta program, which the military was uh, running to the detriment of Zimbabwe. And we can see uh, that Zimbabwe right now, according to UN, there is poverty. Uh, the agriculture is not delivering, yet Zimbabwe used to be the best but the bread basket of Southern Africa, but it's no longer that. It's now a, the baking basket of Southern Africa. So the military doubling in politics is not uh, something that citizens of Zimbabwe welcome. We have seen that through, you know, successful elections where citizens fought for a preferred candidate of their choice, from Dr. Morgan Richard Trankrai to Advocate Nelson Chamisa, uh, and the military ruling otherwise, vetoing otherwise. So it's not something desirable because uh, it's undemocratic and uh, it's, it, it, it borders on, you know, uh, treason, um, you know, borders. So if you are concerned about um, the involvement of the military so far, are you not also concerned about um, the supposed statements of um, President Masi Nangagwa, who has actually said that he would not be seeking a second term um, in office, but then seems as this body language is saying something else. How credible can we place to, uh, such statements? Or are there some other strategic maneuver in light of the military's position that made the president, to, um, of course, say this and probably act otherwise? Um, to begin with, Emerson Mnangagwa to declare interests, you know, through proxies, of course, that he wants to extend his term, is dependent solely on his grip on the military. It's dependent solely on his control of the guns in Zimbabwe. So Emerson Mnangagwa making that push, um, it should be considered to be, you know, a military uh, intention. So the military, through sources, of course, was... He officially, the, military, the commander of the army has not said that, and uh, also the commander of the Zimbabwean Defense Forces has not come out openly to say that. Uh, and, he, you know, he, him saying that, it shows that uh, it's, there's something wrong in Zimbabwe's politics. You know, when there are issues to do with uh, sabotaging the, the constitution, it should be entirely an issue which the citizens of Zimbabwe, through appropriate platforms, Parliament and also through a plebiscite, it's, these are the you know instruments we should really be blocking Emerson Mnangagwa and him in, he making intentions to extend his term through, of course, his control as the commander in chief of the military shows that he depends on military power. And um, if he is to be stopped by the military, yeah, it will be, of course, a plus, but something that should not be celebrated because it is kind of like. Uh, legitimizing military involvement in Zimbabwe's politics, which is an anomaly. So, um, of course, the, I think the, 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 the interesting thing now in all this is uh, Mnangagwa's deputy president, who is the former uh, general and commander of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, who effected a coup against Mkabe, which ushered in uh, Emerson Mnangagwa. So, if the military say no, of course, it will be just Functional politics within the military, within the NPF, where the military has specific interests which are beneficial to them and not the masses of Zimbabwe. And when, I, when we say the military is the elite military commanders, it's not the ordinary soldiers. The ordinary soldiers are also suffering. They are also with the people of Zimbabwe. But then, you know, the army is a straight jacket. The army, they work on commands. The army work on, you know, instructions from their superiors. So it is a sad case. And uh, in case, in terms of uh, the democratic situation in Zimbabwe, where you, uh, president, sitting president, is trying unconstitutional maneuvers and democratic maneuvers, and the military is the one to respond. Um, you know, it shows well, that there is no democracy because the people. Where is the people's voice in all of this? Where is the people's will located in all of this? What matters is the people of Zimbabwe who spoke when they voted for that constitution in 2013. It's the, the people of Zimbabwe yeah. who have Mr. O to be consulted through a plebiscite. So oh, if it's of about course. the military now, it shows the people's voice is no longer important. Oh, of course, we know that um, the will of the people should reign supreme, but then probably before the expiration of his tenure, we get to understand uh, where the footings or the political footings of President Amazon Angangwa uh, would be as regards um, tenure elongation or not. Thank you so much, uh, Macomborero Aruzive, for talking to us. Thank you.